Well, don't worry, you throw my friends. Charles here. I came out, it's 6.30 in the morning. I wanted to get a little bit of exercise before people came out, just to get some fresh air. And I noticed, look at that right there. That's the, the little way to get up on the K. And they have them taped off with blue tape, all of them. So I don't want to break the law, I don't want to police. There was a couple police officers just drove by when I was standing close to it. So I don't want to break the law. Maybe they just had that for yesterday. Uh, anyway, got my mask. And my plan was to walk over close to the fortress just before people got out and about because I've got to get some. I've got cabin fever. And it's okay to do this now since I'm not close to anybody. I follow rules, but... I just want to blow the stink off me, as they say, you know what I mean? This is one of the bridges that was destroyed in 1999. Almost all of them here in Novi Sad. You couldn't even get over to Petrovaradin. Sad, sad, sad. I wonder what those big duct ducts are right there. I don't know. And look under here, under this bridge. That's the reason I'm carrying this on. This shows some of the destruction that was done by NATO. NATO war crimes here, my friends. Anyway, it's depressing enough. See, look over there. You got that blue tape all the way around it, too. Crazy. See, there you can see the rope off area is better. I think it's because all these people are violating this. People are going in big groups and just wandering around, so I guess that's what they're doing. Go Serbia! Okay, look at that, isn't that beautiful? Sunrise over Petrovaradin. Get the church. Petrovaradin, Tvrđeva. Danube. Hey, cha cha, my friends! How you doing, Charles here? And I am protected here in the middle of the Danube here, walking over the Petrovaradin, just getting some exercise, listening to a good playlist I put on. Got to get out of the house. And it's okay to do it now, you know? I'm not breaking any laws that I know of. Just all along the K, as I told you, they have all the entries taped off. So you can't go down there because there's usually hundreds of people. They showed Belgrade and Sim with lots of people. So they're cracking down, my friends. Anyway, just get some exercise, groceries, and I'll go home. Cha cha. Okay, my friends, I'm coming back. I'm not gonna go. I saw some police down there, the base of it, and I think we can go, but I just don't want to push it. You know, I didn't bring my passport or any ID, so I don't want to be asked any questions. <laughs> anyway, feels good to listen to music, get out of the house, breathe some air. Uh, today's the day I gotta make up my mind if I'm gonna go back on that flight on Wednesday or not. Biggest problem is uh, I have to be there two hours before, I have to be there at 5 a.m. or just a little after 5, but the curfew ends at 5 a.m. So, no visad if I get in a car at 5 a.m. when curfew's over and take a taxi, it's gonna take at least 45 minutes. You know? So I'd have to go up Tuesday night and stay in a hotel probably to Belgrade somewhere. I don't know, it seems like a mess. Okay, I don't know if I've shown this before, but this is really interesting. The Armenian, this is a, a tombstone from an Armenian family here in Novi Sad. Isn't that neat? What a cool gravestone. And this has to do with something with the Armenians also. It's a part of the center I don't show very often, not that was pretty. Hotel Vojvodina. Really popular coffee place. She doesn't have a mask on. And I do. Not much going on out here today. girl has one. This is center. 
There's a couple people sitting on benches. And that looks to be it. Quiet. It's still early. It's like 7. 7 o'clock in the morning. There's my office. God, I wish I was in there. Never dreamed I'd say that, huh? Who wants to be in their office? I do. Here they get the flowers coming out here. In the center of the city. Isn't that beautiful? That'll be said so pretty in the spring and in the summer. Unfortunately, we can't thoroughly enjoy it, my friends. Okay, here's some eerie scenes from Belgrade yesterday during the curfew. Uh, this is from a website called Radio Free Europe. Uh, yesterday, as you know, was total lockdown of Belgrade and the entire country of Serbia. If you've ever been here and you know anything about this country, that just blows your mind that you see it this empty. On a beautiful day, this country is bustling. Even on a not so good day, this country is bustling. I mean, it's just scenes from a bad movie. Hey, shout out, my friends. Charles here. Day number 21 of my voluntary self-quarantine here in Novi Sad, Serbia. Uh, day 21, I woke up in a decent mood. I didn't sleep well last night, but I felt good. I got up at like 6 before my alarm went off because I wanted to get out of the house. We just finished our mandatory curfew at 5 a.m. this morning. It's 6 o'clock now, so we're back on curfew. We can't leave the house, but... There for 12 hours, we could leave the house, so I wanted to get up early, get out, listen to some music, get some sunshine, some fresh air, blow the stink off my bones, and I did just that. I had a nice little walk. Uh, as you saw in the video, they had the um, tape over the K that runs right along the Danube River. It's usually busy with people. They had it all taped off. I don't know if that was for... for yesterday or they're doing that from here on out so I didn't test it I didn't go through there to walk I walked across the bridge I was going to go up to the fortress and then they had a couple police officers down there below so I thought e turned right around because I didn't bring my passport uh with me and here in Serbia if you're not from Serbia and maybe it's strange for you you have to show the police who you are here in Serbia if they ask you you must show documents uh United States depending on the state you're in you don't have to show the police unless you do something wrong uh, but here, you must. Uh, that happens to a lot of people. They'll just randomly stop you. I, twice in my whole 10 years here, have they ever stopped me? And that was years back. Uh, the police here are good. I have no issues with the police. Uh, be it corruption or whatever. They've always been professional in acting. Uh, and anytime I've asked them something, I've had good experiences with them. Um, anyway... I got out, went to the shop this morning, no lines, everything was full. I mean, everything was in there uh, this morning. Three customers, I went in there at like 7, 10 a.m. Um, in Idea, uh, here, here in downtown. And just three other customers, lots of people in there stocking the shelves. I had my mask on, of course. And I spent like 30 euros, uh, three hilia de dinara, and I got like some beef, some, I'm going to make some tacos. Uh, I got me a nice bottle of red wine. Uh, it was like 12 euros. Jacob's Creek, a nice red wine. Goes good with red meat and cheese. Ah, and I'm not drinking a bunch of having one glass because I, when I talk with you. Coolest thing that happened on day 21. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? Uh, my friend Urosh made that for me. He's an artist here. He does caricatures. I'm going to put his info in this description. So hit him up. Get one of those made for your friends, loved ones, or you. He does such a good job. I didn't even give him any ideas. Uh, he just made it. Zayacharsko Pivo, Serbia. Hair looks just like that usually. Now it looks like Sranje, but usually it looks good like that. I could look at it all day. Does an awesome job, Urosh. Svaka čas, Um... I went from Illinoisan to Novosagenine. 
Uh, that's what's cool about this country. When you talk about what people are called from certain cities, towns, and villages in Serbia, it's, it's crazy. There's no really rhyme or reason, in my opinion. Somebody from here in Novi Sad, they're called a Novosadjanin. Somebody from, from Belgrade, Beogradjanin. Somebody from Pirot, Pirochanac. Somebody from Nish, Nishlia. Somebody from Subotica, Suboticinin, Subot. I don't know. Zrenjaninac, uh, Apatin, Apatinac. Ponchevo? What the hell would you call somebody from Ponchevo? Ponchevachinin? <laughs> I tell you, that, it's crazy. Just like here, Yasama Americanac. Uh, a male from the United States is an Americanac. A female is a Americanca. Uh, Canada, Kananjanin. Kananjanka? Kananjanin Janka? No. I don't know what it is for a woman. I, I, so many times I've said here in Serbia, when I lived in smaller communities, Sromska Mitrovica, Niš, uh, Panchevo, go to get a haircut at some barber shop, a bunch of old barber men, Balkan, typically smoking. They see some stranger come in. I say, hey, Zvini, jako malo pričim srpski? Uh, Nula bez linija malo gore. And they're like, odoklasi. Uh, ja sam kanadžinin. <laughs> I'm Kananjanin, Gospelina. Oh, great. You know, if you say, yes, I'm Americanic. Yeah, boom. <laughs> you never know what will happen. Ah, too many questions if you say you're an American. You say Canadian. Ah, everybody loves Canadians, right? Uh, anyway, my friends, let's get to these numbers. Numbers for today, up 292. Big increase again here in Serbia. It's up to 2,200 with 58 deceased, God rest their souls. We passed Mexico, we passed Finland, and some other countries, uh, but we're hoping this peak is close. Uh, I heard I, maybe the Minister of uh, Health uh, said we're getting close to the bad time here, so uh, hopefully we can peak and get done with this, so we can get back to our lives. Uh, United States grew 2,300 cases up to 338,900. Uh, getting close to half a million people with nearly 10,000 dead, 9,600 deceased. I mean, messy. Um, what's going on in the news here? Uh, the news here, in the news, they had a couple things here about Serbia that were interesting. It says Serbia, uh, Sanisha Mali, he actually added me on LinkedIn, which I thought was awesome. <laughs> so the finance minister here accepted my uh, request on LinkedIn. Add me on LinkedIn if you want to. Uh, but anyway, the, the finance minister here it had an article about him. It says, Serbia moles additional measures to support the, the sectors of the Serbian economy worst hit by the coronavirus. Sanisha Mali said that the government plans to introduce new measures to help the economy if this situation lasts more than three months. When he says additional measures, that's because they already passed the $5.1 billion dollar economic stimulus package, if you will, that's going to give every adult 100 euros um, and do some different things here to assist medium and small businesses here in Serbia. Um, that's on top of two billion loan guarantee scheme uh, with the banks of Serbia. Uh, and they said this was finance. I thought this was interesting. This 5.1 billion uh, relief package, 65% was funded by the Serbian government. Uh, on surplus that was available. The other is, is being borrowed from international markets. So I thought that was interesting. Um, another thing that was in the news, a Serbian, the Serbian Association of Economists, a gentleman by the name of Alexander Vlahovic, he said industry will probably begin to recover in the late third quarter. We should start seeing it here in Serbia rise. And in fourth quarter, it should get back to stability. Um, and they had some good growth here in the pre, in the early in this year. It said um, industrial production grew 7.6% year on year in February before this coronavirus hit. So it was going up. It was looking pretty good. Uh, he had a quote too. He said the government should not think about keeping budget surplus, but increase expenditures in order to support the economy. 
Uh, so that was interesting stuff here in Serbia. One of the most interesting things I found here was in the National Interests. Um, it's a, you can look it up. Uh, they had an article. The article's title here, or the, the headline, was Serbia's new rocket launchers are meant to put NATO in its place. That was the headline. I thought that was interesting. So it was a really cool article. It said, Serbia has unveiled a new guided rocket that serves as a message to its neighbors. If you help NATO bomb us, we'll bomb your cities. I mean, this seems really provocative. I mean, kind of a silly thing to say. Uh, it says, Serbia's new Shumadia, it's called, I guess. They didn't put the sh on this. It was an English article, but I bet it's Shumadia. That's like the forests of central Serbia. It says, Serbia's new Shumadia truck, a truck-mounted weapon that can hit targets 175 miles away with 400 millimeter rockets with a 440-pound warhead and inertial navigation. It says Serbia also quadruple, is quadrupling its modern jet fighter force, um, courtesy of Russia and Belarus. Russia is selling six MiG-29s and medium-range anti-aircraft missiles for 640 million euros to Serbia. Belarus is donating eight more MiG-29s and two anti-aircraft systems. I wonder if that's true. Belarus is donating eight MiG-29s? I mean, damn, that's a lot of money. How can they afford that? And then there was a quote from uh, Zoran Djordjevic, the defense minister here in Serbia. He said, the MiGs will be equipped with the most modern arms, radars, optical, and communication systems. Um, so that's going to double uh, what they currently have. It says Serbia only has four MiG-29s to go along with 15 old Yugoslavian um, attack jets and three more uh, MiG-21s that they're going to phase out. So Serbia is really ramping up um, its defense systems here. Uh, and in that same article, it says after this, Croatia, of course, is, is, uh, is uh, doing bids on some more stuff with Lockheed Martin, an American company, getting possibility of some bids for some Croatian um, anti-aircraft uh, stuff. Interesting. I don't know how uh, reliable the national interest is, but I thought that article is interesting. I'll put it in the description here so you can feel free to read it um, at your leisure. Anyway, lastly, this is going to be a little shorter video than yesterday. Um, I'm drinking me a nice glass of red wine, Australian wine, $12 wine. He lit a stodina. It goes good with red meat and some cheese. Um, I made my decision, my friends. The embassy called me today, actually. The U.S. Embassy called, and they emailed me, and they said, are you uh, going to be taking this flight we need to know today? And what was my decision after walking around back and forth in this apartment, reaching out to my, my best friends, my parents? I have decided... Sorry, the flight is Monday morning or Wednesday morning at 7 a.m. I need to be at the airport. But my decision was to decline. I sent the embassy a message back. I didn't answer my phone, um, but I just, because my phone was ringing this morning, I turned it on silent because I'm getting so many notifications here anymore on everything. So I just turned it down. Uh, and then the embassy messaged me. They said, hey, we've tried to call you twice. Uh, we need to put your name on the list. If you're taking this this evacuation flight on Wednesday at 7 a.m., please call, contact us immediately. Uh, after sp just really rigorous um, uh, deliberation, uh, I've de decided to decline that evacuation flight to Washington, D.C. Uh, and I hope I don't regret it. Uh, the reason I said no, I'm going to stay here in Serbia is... Too much unknown. Uh, this is going to hurt me financially uh, to stay here in Serbia because I don't know when Serbia is going to open up again and allow any flights. But I have a feeling um, once Serbia, the state of emergency is over, uh, there's going to be ways for an American to get out of Serbia and to go to a country that still has flights going to the United States of America, uh, commercial flights. 
So even if I, I paid for this month's rent, 130 bucks, you know, <laughs> so it's nothing. I go back to the U.S. If I were to go back to the U.S.A. and get to Washington, D.C., maybe I'm quarantined there. Maybe I have to pay like money in a hotel, hotel in D.C. for a ghetto when it's probably 150 a night. Uh, and then maybe I get to my island maybe, or maybe my flight's canceled to the island. Maybe I get there. I know they're on lockdown. The hospital's already full. Uh, they have 14 beds in that hospital. There's 10 cases of Corona. They have to evacuate you. I might have get Corona on the airplane. I mean, you just never know. Uh, so the way I looked at it when I got opinions from my friends, my mother, everybody, they, they was all pro staying here. Uh, so I think I made a right choice. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be here in Serbia. Uh, but as this month progresses, I really want to be in the USA because I have a job. I mean, a lot of you said your job's not going to be there. Job is there. Job is busy. Uh, they're doing food delivery service. I'm the operations manager there, and so they need me. But I think it's too risky for me to go at this point in time. Uh, so hopefully there will be another flight here at the end of the month or early May. Um, if not... I'm stuck here with you guys, uh, but I still think it was the right move. <sighs> because the embassy said that was the last evacuation flight they're going to organize. Funny part about that, United States, of course, is a very wealthy country in comparison to Serbia. The U.S. Embassy had sent me two emails on that flight two days ago. The first email said, it showed up at like 9.30, 10 o'clock in the morning. It said, we have organized a flight Wednesday, April 8th at, t at 7 a.m. to Washington, D.C. It said in there, you, we, we are unable to take payment at this time. You may have to pay for this flight. You might have to sign a promissory note before you get on the flight. Okay? And then 10 minutes later, I get an additional email from the embassy. It said, thanks to the generosity of the Serbian government, this flight is free. I mean, isn't that kind of odd? American government is going to charge me, but the Serbian government paid for this. You know, a country who's struggling, whose economy is small, is paying for these Americans to go there. I mean, thank you, Serbian government. That seems kind of odd. And after I mentioned a free flight in a video, I had lots of people around, Americans that are stranded abroad. There's an American in Croatia. He actually wanted to stay. The Americans here in Serbia and an American football player in Ukraine, he messaged me, he watched my video, and he said, hey, you mentioned the flight, flight was free. He said, here in Ukraine, they've told me I have to sign a promissory note before I get on the flight, and we don't even know how much we're signing that we're going to have to pay. He said, it just says on there, it'll be at fair market value. So he has to sign this paper, not knowing how much it is. When he gets back to the USA, he has to pay. You know, He said, how are you getting it for free? I said, the generous Serbian government. <laughs> Anyway, my friends, that's it. There's a there's other Americans here uh, here in Serbia. A lady named Heidi, a lady named Heather, another young lady in Užice, Kakos, Zovi, Jennifer, possibly, um, Dawn down in Niš, uh, a guy named Johnny here in Novi Sad, good friend of mine, Sam from Alaska. He's here. They've all said that they're staying here. There's a young lady in Gorni Milanovac, uh, Kakos, Zovi. She's studying here. A high school student who came first time ever. They had a full year uh, student exchange for high schools. She's studying in Gorni Milanovac. I don't know if she's here or not. All of you Americans that I just mentioned out there, or any others, please, I would be, I would love to make a video with you. Maybe I could just send you some questions, or you could just m make a short little video about who you are, where you're from, what you're doing, what, where you're at. Send it to me on like we transfer or something to my email address and then I'll put it in a video because people would be interested in hearing about you and, and, and your life and what's going on. Anyway, my friends, that's it. I got to eat. Do Virginia. Svako dobro. Ciao.